Well, thank you for being with us tonight. God bless you for, for being with us at Word of Truth Fellowship's production tonight. Uh, let me remind you that uh, Sunday morning our doors will be open. Once again, our doors will be open in the same fashion. We will, uh, we will be, uh, there'll be no, no children's church, no Sunday school, no nursery, but uh, we will be right here for a time of worship, and you're welcome to come. This is at 1030. 1030 and the doors will be open and we want you to come and and uh, worship the Lord with us now you can pick us up if you're not able to come or or are still uh, staying safe at home uh, you can see us live at 11 o'clock on Facebook or you can see us on Facebook or YouTube at six o'clock six six o'clock Sunday evening but uh, but uh, Sunday morning, Sunday morning at 1030, the doors will be open and there'll be people here. We'll be spread out all across the building here, social distancing ourselves, but we'll be having a good time as we, uh, as we worship together. But next Wednesday night will be the same. We'll be coming to you the same way on, uh, on Facebook and YouTube Wednesday evening and uh, at seven o'clock and uh, you can uh, be sure and tune in with us, tune in with us in. But uh, let's pray today before we begin. Lord, we're so thankful, Lord, that you're always with us, regardless of in what way we, we worship. Lord, you're always there. And uh, Father, today, Lord, we pray, Father, for our country, and we pray for our leaders and, and uh, those that are ill and those that are, that are working through job situations. God, we just ask that you would just help them today. Lord, guide them, Lord, in decisions that need to be made and, and protect them, Lord, from, 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 from those that may try to take advantage of them and, and uh, from misinformation. But, Lord, we just ask that you just be with our country, Lord, and, and help us, oh God. Help us, Lord, to, to uh, draw closer to you, Lord, during this time, this time of need. We love you, Lord. We ask that you'd help us tonight, Lord, as we open your word, Father, that we might be touched by your hand. Amen. Good evening and welcome to church. Um, we are so blessed to be able to come together and worship together as a church family. Um, I look forward to seeing God move in our service tonight and really do great things for our families. Let's go ahead and praise our Jesus. Ready?
You know, there's a, um, there's a song that was sung by Diana Ross that said, reach out and touch somebody's hand and make this world a better place if you can. Well, in the day of the coronavirus, touching someone's hand is a no-no. It's, it's taboo, and uh, people are cautious to avoid uh, uh, touching, afraid of contracting the, 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 the virus, and social distancing is important and uh, to our survival, but in keeping, in keeping our distance, we lose out on the importance and the benefits of the touch. Uh, social anxiety and stress is reduced by a touch and, 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 and connection is made with a touch. Uh, when we touch, hug, or, or pat, it's a gesture that is loaded with meaning. You know, we either seek affection or we attempt to communicate, uh, communicate a need or, or express an emotion. Uh, but tonight, tonight I want to I want to deal with a touch unlike any any other touch imaginable. This touch is is a irresistible touch. It's a it's an irrevocable touch. It's an irreplaceable touch, and it's transforming and it's transcending and reviving and 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 restoring and, and a resurrecting touch. It's a touch that. And not necessarily done by a physical hand, by, but done either by a word that is spoken or done, done just divinely. It touches the heart and the, the seat of our emotions and our character. And it's the touch of God. In 1 Samuel, the 10th chapter, verse 26, it says, And Saul also went home to Gibeah, and valiant men went with him whose hearts God had touched. And over in, in uh, Luke, the 17th chapter, Beginning with verse 11, it says, Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem, and he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee, that as he entered a certain village there, there, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourselves to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. Now one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? You know, today we have a new normal way of life. Social distancing should be taken seriously and maintaining six feet apart from people, not in your family, has become a standard operating procedure today. Handshaking is now obsolete. And hugs are uh, a thing of the past and, and, and touching in general is gone. Uh, we see people wearing gloves in, in everyday, everyday life to, to keep from uh, encountering germs that, that fr from simply just touching different things. Wearing a mask into a store is seen quite often and done by many of us. But the importance of a touch is, to humans is a vital part of, of life and it helps in, in healing the pain of the world. A human touch uh, is vital for growth and development. Uh, a parent-child touch uh, trans, uh, uh, forms the, the foundation of early childhood development and starting from birth throughout the, throughout the toddler years. Since birth, the touch of a mother is like a, a magic potion for a, for a child calming and soothing them w with an ever so gentle touch. Uh, from the earliest stages uh, to, the, to the latest stages of life, the human touch is vitally important. It's been proven medically that at, at as early as 26 weeks, fetuses have responded to vibrations, vibrations within the womb. And touches, uh, uh, touch uh, helps newborns uh, regulate their body temperatures and, and, and contributes to their, their ability to, to, to regulate their emotions. Uh, babies smile and utter, utter uh, uh, sounds more frequently when touched gently instead of being tickled or poked. Uh, the psychological uh, health and, and, and physical growth of children is dependent upon the human touch. The need for touch doesn't stop with aging. It's as important in the latter years of life, life as it is in the beginning. You know, it's proven that the sense of touch, per, touch persists beyond the, the human functions of, visions and, of vision and hearing, indicating that the importance of human touch extends through the lifespan. Of the five senses, touch is, is developed first and informs self-awareness. 
uh, when humans become in close contact with one another, even in minor ways, a hormone is, is released. And this hormone uh, responds to nerve stimulation by activating a feeling of, of well-being and stress relief. Touch lights up the emotional, emotional regions of the brain. You know, closeness in human contact, closest uh, contact not only uh, offers affections from, uh, from populations, but to generations as well. As you see this, as you see, as we can see from all of this, that touch is especially important. However, there's nothing better, nothing, nothing, uh, nothing better than a touch from God. Now, a touch from God on the heart of a person brings about a healing. It brings about healing or, 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 or a miracle. It releases a supernatural strength and, and will produce a, a radical transformation in their lives. A touch from God is a transforming touch, it's a transitioning touch, and it's a triumphant touch. Now, the touch of God transforms us into a new creature. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. It transforms our old way of thinking. It transforms our old way of living, our old habits, and our old lifestyles. A touch from God heals. In Mark, the fifth chapter, verses 25 through 34, it deals with a woman uh, that had an issue of flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. And she had spread, or spent all that she had, and, and she wasn't any better, but rather she was, grew worse. And she was sick physically and broke mentally and cast aside and emotionally messed up. But a touch from God, a touch of God, and she was made whole. And she was transformed immediately from being an outcast, sick, broke, nameless woman to being a daughter of God. Now, a touch from God cleanses. In Mark, the first chapter, verses 40 and 41, we read, Now a leper came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him and saying to him, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. Instantly, the man is transformed from being an unclean leper to being cleansed. You know, a touch of God brings transformation from the old life to a new life and cleansing to those who yield themselves totally to God. You know, transforming touch of God makes, a, makes everything new. After being, after being touched by God, you have a new walk. You have a new life, uh, a new attitude, a new point of, a new, a, a new, a new uh, a point of view. What, whatever the leprosy or the issue you, you are experiencing today, either physically, physical or spiritual, a touch from heaven will cleanse you. Now, a touch from God is transcending touch that penetrates that penetrates discouragement, hopelessness, depression, weakness, and weariness, and it reaches the lowly, the lonely, and the and the rejected and the emasculated, and it breaks through every every heartbreak and destroys uh, every diagnosis and, re and rescues the, the 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 drowning spirit. In First Kings, the nineteenth chapter, beginning about verse four, we begin to read about Elijah. And Elijah was a prophet that had become fearful and depressed and, and scared and lonely and self-condemning and even contemplated suicide, asking God to take his life. But God touched him with a touch that transcended all the problems and brought rejuvenation and empowerment to his life and made him to continue his, his ministry. You may be feeling depression. You may be feeling anxiety, maybe confusion or loneliness or seemingly impenetrable uh, issues in your life, but a touch from God, a touch of God will transcend all that and transform your life. Now, a touch of God is triumphant, which means the act or the fact or condition of being victorious solves the problems of sickness and, 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 and problems. A touch of God opens blind, blinded eyes. In Mark, the 10th chapter, verse 46, Bartimaeus, was, who was blind, came to Jesus, and Jesus asked him what he wanted. Bartimaeus replied to Jesus' request that he might receive his sight. And the Lord touches him, and he receives his sight. 
You know, a touch from God triumphs over darkness and opens eyes uh, to the true light. A touch from God raises the dead. If you read the 17th chapter in the 17th chapter, or I'm sorry, the seventh chapter of Luke, there was a, a widow in the city of Nain, and she had only one son, and this son had died. And the woman was sorrowful and unhappy, and no, no doubt even wished that she could trade places with her son. However, as they were going to bury this young man, they meet the Lord. And Jesus stretches out his hand and he touched the coffin and the man got up and he became alive again. A touch from God will revive whatever is dead in your life. A dead relationship, a dead desire, or maybe dead finances. You know, I couldn't, there's not enough time here this evening to preach to you of all the touches of God in the Bible. So as I close here, I just want to give you just a few of those that received a touch from God. The touch of God for Noah was a touch of security. The touch of God for Abraham and Sarah was a touch of, of, of revival. The touch of God for Jacob was a touch of reconciliation. The touch of God for the Israelites was a touch of deliverance. The touch of God for Elijah was, was a touch of restoration and reassurance. And the touch of God for David was a, was a touch of victory, was a touch of victory over a giant Goliath. The touch of God for the woman with the issue of blood was a, a touch of transformation. The touch of God for the leper was a touch of renewal. The touch of God for the blind man was a touch of recovery. And the touch of God for the widow woman that had lost her son was a touch of resurrection. Folks, you may need a touch right now. You know, a touch of reconciliation, maybe where there's conflict. Maybe a, maybe a, a touch of, of restoration where, there, where there's discouragement. A touch of righteousness when we feel the burden of sin. A touch of comfort when we feel confused and there's sadness. Maybe you need a touch of the Lord tonight. Why don't you just put your hand on your heart right where you're at there tonight. Let me pray for you. Let me just pray that you experience the touch of God in your need tonight. Lord, how we love you tonight, Lord. And Father, how we do know and understand just how important a human touch is to, to our existence here on earth. But Lord, how much more, how much greater is the touch from the Almighty God that can change all of our circumstances, that can, that can bring a calming to every situation, that can bring and be a touch of forgiveness and a touch of, a touch of love. Lord, today, Lord, I pray, Father, for those that are, are listening tonight, Lord, those under the sounding of my voice, Lord, that, Father, whatever need that they might have tonight, Lord, that they experience your touch in their life and in their need. Lord, where would we be without you? My God, my God, where would we be without you? Lord, touch us tonight, we pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen.